from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering OCP U.S. Summit 2016. Brought to you by OCP. Welcome back to the Open Compute Project Summit 2016. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. We go out to all the events, help extract the signal from the noise. Happy to have on the program two first-time guests. Uh, so uh, we've got first sitting next to me, it's uh, Eric Enderbrock, who is the nice. VP of Storage Marketing with Micron, and we've also got Mark Glasgow, who's VP of Enterprise Sales with Micron. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank hey, for thanks us. for having us, Steve, right. appreciate it. So, you know, the, the keynote this morning, I love Facebook walk through and talked about uh, the, the, the expansion of the, of, 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 the, uh, of the project. They said, you know, really helped, you know, transforming compute. Uh, networking was the next one, and, and storage uh, is, you know, a next piece uh, that you know, they, they see lots of opportunity to help you know, improve efficiencies. Uh, and you know, I think about Micron, you guys are at the yep. center of a lot of the transformations going there. So uh, Eric, maybe start with you, tell, tell us uh, you know, a little bit, just your background, what you do at Micron, and what, what brings Micron uh, to the OCP event? Yeah, you bet, Stu, thanks. So yeah, first of all, it's great to be here. I mean, such an exciting event as we were kind of talking before the camera. But you know, my role is, um, is I run the marketing team for what we call our storage business unit at Micron, really focused on NAND flow emerging memories that are non-volatile and, uh, and putting all those together into systems and solid state drives. So it's pretty exciting. And you know, really what, what I think kind of the, as you mentioned, the talk there about networking and, and all these elements coming together and, and driving the efficiencies of data center at scale, that's where we really think Micron's coming into our own. You know, been known as a DRAM company, uh, but there's so much more to us. The storage business unit that we're focusing on brings both the memories that drive you know, the compute platforms today, along with the NAND flash and the storage, and, and it's really about bringing those two closer to the processing window, bringing them closer to the CPU, so that we're driving more efficiencies out of that whole platform, and uh, it's an exciting time, and I really think, if you think about what's in a server, that server being the core element of all of computing today, you know, it's becoming the storage element, it's becoming the networking element, it's always been the compute, uh, memories are really kind of core to all pieces of those, and uh, that's, that's our future. All right, so uh, Mark, why, why don't you, you know, say the same thing? Yeah, so uh, thank you, first of all, for having us. Um, really exciting. Um, so I've, uh, I've been in the storage industry now for a couple of decades, and I uh, was running storage for North America for a large company, and was recruited away from there by Micron to start an enterprise storage sales division. And you know, basically what, what Micron sees is a 37-year-old memory company that makes all manner of, of volatile and non-volatile memories, as Eric just mentioned. Um, we really felt the need to get closer to the end user, especially as you see some of these hyperscale accounts that are consolidating so, and aggregating so much compute and, and, and storage. Um, there, there needed to be a mechanism, a sales team, that would, that would extend the brand that is Micron, not just through the OEMs, but actually down to some of the bigger end users. So uh, my team is, uh, is a global, uh, globally focused team. Uh, talking to the biggest customers everywhere from you know, Amazon, Baidu, Alibaba, uh, on down to some of the more traditional companies like Goldman Sachs and, and Bank of America. Yeah, uh, Mark, hey, maybe start. You know, one of the things I look at this show, this is a, a great example of some of the learnings from the largest companies yep. and helping really push that down market and expand it. Um, you know, what are you seeing? What are some of the interesting conversations that, that, that you're hearing from users today? What are they asking from Micron, uh, some, of, some of the big disruptions? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you wind things back about 10 years, um, it, it, really, it really has, has changed dramatically. I, mean, I started selling frame-based arrays in the 90s and, um, uh, and on in through the early 2000s. And you know, some of these bigger companies, you know, like Google, like Facebook, uh, really, really just, their model broke if they were going to base their business on a frame-based array, and not the least of which were the maintenance fees that they would have to pay. So they were, it was, it's all about driving costs. I'm, every time I meet with any one of the big eight hyperscales on the planet, I'm blown away at, at just how, um, how focused they are about driving costs out of the data center, but keeping the flexibility there. And, and so, while they were working on that, <clears throat> an interesting thing was happening on our set, the semiconductor side of the world, and that was NAND flash prices kept dropping and dropping and dropping, justifying the use of NAND in many, many more workloads. And so those two confluencing factors come together and, uh, and you get this thing called these hyperscales that are aggregating and, and buying an awful lot of NAND and DRAM to accomplish you know, reducing latencies, driving out costs, and increasing flexibility. 
Yeah, um, it, it's interesting. Eric, you know, you, you were talking a little bit about, you know, the, the, the transition of what's happening with DRAM and yep. Flash. Uh, you know, I, I think, think back to the 90s as to, you know, it's like, well, memory was memory, and, you yeah. know, storage is storage, and yeah. now, now it's a little bit more of a continuum as Near to, the you know, meet, right. price points and latencies and IOPS. It's, uh, you know, if I design something today, I can have a very different mix of those components based on price and how yep. much we have versus if I just done, did it two years ago. So, yeah, exactly you know, right. how, how does Micron, how do you guys help your, uh, your, your customers, um, and how do you manage? I mean, there's so much change happening. How do, yeah. how do we keep up with it? Yeah, well, let me take that one to start with, and we'll go to Mark, but I mean, a couple different ways, and Mark actually mentioned probably the most key piece to this, which is, is really around the workload. You know, we spend a lot of time not focusing on the technology and really kind of understanding what are the dy dynamics of those applications. And it can be a, a hyperscale workload, they can be a more traditional database workload. But all of those uh, in our Austin facility, we've set up pretty big kind of interoperability and partnership lab where we're running those, we're testing them, we're getting a better feel and understanding for the dynamics of exactly what you said. What is the right recipe across the sets of workloads and, and how do they drive it? And you know, if you think about the amount of data that's coming out there, and, um, and it's really becoming that, that memory and flash technologies and the speed and bandwidth they have is really becoming almost an, a necessity for the application. So you know, maybe 5% of storage today is flash, if, per, if you think about it per gigabyte. So it hasn't actually penetrated that deeply into the, into the workloads across the, the data center. But as we move forward with artificial intelligence and you know, it could be autonomous driving cars or machine learning, or even, even maybe the most cutting edge of in-memory big data kind of applications, the speed at which the data is flowing in, how quickly you have to update it and feed those in-memory applications to get real-time answers, you know, it's just really all about memory and it's, it's how it's coming together. Yeah, so just to keep going on that workload topic, um, you know, it's funny, my, my sales teams don't ever sell um, the speeds and feeds aspects of NAND and DRAM. I mean, how could it get any more boring than that? Um, uh, my guys are focused on solving the bigger workload problem, and we know if we do that right, then ultimately the, the, the right answer will come out and they'll see what the, what the smart way to go is, which is precisely why we're here at OCP, because this whole movement here is helping to drive that exact, getting the data closer to the CPU, reducing latencies, reducing costs, increasing flexibility, and so my guys are very, very focused on that. Another interesting thing, though, we did a study, a pretty exhaustive study. We looked at all the servers going out the door in support of what we call performance-sensitive workloads or high-value workloads, it is not uncommon for about 70 to 75% of the bomb cost of a server that's going out the door in support of a performance sensitive workload to be made up of NAND and DRAM. So it begs the question, who's the rightful owner of that workload conversation? He who has 25% of the value on the server or he who has 75%? Micron likes the 75% and honestly, when we start talking to the guys that are in the, in the, in the trenches trying to solve these workload problems, they like knowing that we're, we can have those deeper, deeper technology conversations with them yeah. about the workload. Well, wow, that, that, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, it's interesting. The storage industry, we've talked for so long about, you know, it's just storage growth. Yeah. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's new workloads, new demands. I mean, you know, Facebook, I, I, when they started OCP, it was like, oh, photos. I mean, they used to just use, you know, filers from some of the traditional yeah. enterprise filers and remember that just, the scalability wasn't there, the performance wasn't there, they had to build some new architectures. Now it's like, you know, photos were, you know, kind of tough, but video. video. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. streaming high def video. It's like, you know, Zuckerberg's going to do a broadcast and a million people want to watch that. Heck, I'm surprised it was only a million, they said, right. you know, since they've got a billion users. So, you know, we're talking just orders of magnitude more uh, for some of these guys. What, what do you see guys see as this putting pressures on the data center, the new platforms, new technologies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we've talked a lot about them, but in really I think the, the key one that I see, and maybe it's the macro trend, if you will, and it doesn't matter if it's Facebook or, or a hyperscale or, or even getting down into advertising kind of companies, it's this move from I used to do everything in batch to now I do it in real time. And when you think about the pressures of real time video delivering and capturing and, and producing it out, the things that you're doing here on theCUBE, amazing technology that can that can produce this, get it out to the masses and be on systems immediately. Um, but, but then you take that a step further and you say, okay, I actually have to drive a car or steer it around the, uh, the streets and react to different traffic conditions. 
Um, I've got a machine into machine com communication that has to happen. The, the speed and the, the flow of data, even if that data is only relevant for, you know, say it takes a minute and then that data is garbage to you, you had to transact it, you had to crunch it, and you had to come up with the right answer almost in real time. And it's that real timeness that, that we see is probably the most exciting part of what open compute is all about and, and where it comes together. Yeah, when, when we deal with the large hyperscales, it's very easy to fall into the trap of just, you know, have a very sort of meaningless, what I feel is a meaningless conversation around cost per gig or cost per IOP or yeah. IOPS per BTU, God forbid. Um, and, uh, and it happens. Um, but we're really working uh, really well with, some, with, with uh, about three-fourths of the, of the big Super 8 um, and getting in, into those deeper conversations where it's 26, 30, you know, 40 months down the road where they're trying to solve some of these bigger problems. And, and when we have those, those deep dive engineering conversations, we're blown, I'm blown away by um, this whole idea of the Internet of Things, how we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on big data, and the need, every single one of those applications has to have instantaneous access. And, and I'm, tar I'm, I'm sorry, but spinning media just doesn't cut it. It's just not going to, it's not going to get there. I mean, one of the funny things, I was thinking about this the other day, if you opened up a server or any compute device, really, and you looked at it, I think there's only one thing in it that would be recognizable from a machine 20 years ago, or, or even 15 years ago, and it's this one little platter that spins around. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just keep questioning myself, I, the processor doesn't look the same, the motherboards are different, the memory, everything is so dramatically different, yet we're still spinning media inside them. It's, it's kind of baffling, and so, you know, we take it as a big challenge to get the cost right, get the technology right, and, move us forward. Yeah, I, I mean, for, you know, I think conversation we've had with most users these days, yeah. it, it's not, you know, why flash, it's, you know, where, how much, yeah. you know, how fast can yeah. we adopt, uh, and, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing that. Uh, at, at this conference, uh, you know, not only is the discussion of open source, but it's all the partnerships uh, that are happening. Can you speak to, I mean, you know, the storage industry isn't really well known for open source, you know, partnerships kind of come yeah. and go. Yeah. Um, you know, w w w how, talk, talk about that aspect. Uh, of, of sure, I happening. mean, you know, nobody can do it alone in the enterprise. And you know, that was, uh, you know, both Mark and I have come from pretty varied background working at some uh, big companies who, who were pretty big in storage, um, as you have yourself. And, and even those big companies had to partner up. And so, you know, as we look at this, we're spending, in fact, even coming up in, through April, we're doing some pretty exciting announcements coming forward about how are we partnering in, in trying to grow a bigger ecosystem? And so we're, we're huge, actually, uh, uh, proponents, I guess, of the, of the OCP model, which is through collaboration, we'll move these things a lot quicker. Some of what we're really focusing on today is, you know, if you think of Flash, we treat Flash like spinning media, and, and that's not necessarily very optimal, because it isn't spinning media. We do that for interoperability and ease of use and deployment. But so we're doing a lot with our software brethren to say, all right, how do we actually strip out some of those layers of abstraction that, that we've done for convenience sake, but actually, you know, really lower the amount of benefit you get out of using memory technologies in general. And I kind of think of it like, you know, anybody's laptop. You know, we all know and can look at the specs and say, you know, uh, an SSD is 100 times faster than, than a hard drive. But your laptop's not 100 times faster when you put an SSD in it. Well, there's a lot of layers of stuff in between. Same thing in the data center. So we're working really hard with a lot of the, the really key open source, or, yeah, open source partners as well as kind of industry standard commercial software players to see if we can't break some of those barriers down. Yeah, now if, if you look at everything we make, we, we make a lot of stuff, but the main two things are NAND and DRAM, so volatile and non-volatile memory. Everything we make requires a server. So for, first and foremost for me is make sure we're very close to our server brethren, and I don't care what form that comes in. Um, you know, we, we love them all, right, because they need us and we need them. So from a partnering standpoint, we, we really do work hard with them uh, to optimize architectures, especially going forward. Um, and, then, and then beyond that, you know, software defined X, whether it's networking, storage, data center, um, you know, inevitably, if you're going in and not talking about speeds and fees, but actually talking about workloads, the, the, the software services layer is going to come up. Well, we don't do that. Um, so so we, we have many partnerships. VMware is one of them, uh, where we've got some very interesting announcements that we're going to, as Eric mentioned, we'll be uh, announcing on April 12th. All right, so we're, we're looking forward to the April event. Yep. Uh, just uh, for, for our audience, but, you know, people probably know Micron because they might have opened up a box and they, 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 they see your logos on there. I, I know, and I, I see sure. your stuff everywhere. Uh, you know, when we think of Micron, what, what's, what's the brand? What should we be thinking of Micron as to how you fit into the ecosystem? You know, we have a really long history of innovation through memories. Now, 
you know, and memories and traditionally have been pretty commodity. And so, you know, that, that's one way to think of us, but when you start moving forward into this open compute model, really it's, it's the innovation we're doing with things like 3D Crosspoint, where we're, we're now taking memories to the next level. Certainly what we're doing in Flash and DRAM kind of comes along with those too, but um, really it's going to start being the innovation that becomes the cornerstone for, I think, the server technologies of the next generation and, the, and, the store, and therefore the, the application technologies. And so, you know, we're, we're definitely interested in, in being a greater part of the value chain, working more with the partners as you described, but, but taking that innovation direct to customers in a way that I think Micron hasn't done before so that you know, there is a, maybe a greater recognition of what's inside and the value that we're bringing. So I'm going I'm to answer just a little differently. It's, um, being storage guys, we, we come to Micron and, and, and when people refer to storage as memory, we sort of, our, our yeah. skin sort of crawls. So I, I want to I make sure we throw in from a branding perspective that Micron is a storage company, yeah. a very large one actually. Um, and we, we sell a lot of, just however you want to measure it, dollars or, or raw terabytes out the door. Um, so we are absolutely a storage company that as Eric mentioned with some, some crazy interesting stuff that's about to hit in the next 12 to 18 months. And it, it's going to enable applications that people haven't even thought of yet, so we're super excited about that. Um, and, and again, sort of what Eric mentioned about partnering, um, we really are getting deeper, not only with the big hyperscales, but with companies that are looking for better, you know, the ever um, uh, sort of uh, uh, never ending process of looking for ways to, to optimize across a, a, what is a very complex polynomial equation of network compute and storage, making that all work together perfectly. And so, for me, the, the, the brand recognition that I hope to achieve, you know, where we came from for 37 years as just being an OEM provider, we're going to keep doing that. We're not competing with our OEMs. Any demand we create, we pull through those OEM channels. But we want to also be seen as a company that's out meeting with end users yeah. and talking to them specifically about the, what their needs are, not just today, but next 12, 18, 24 months. All right, well, Eric and Mark, really appreciate you joining us here. Uh, the Open Compute Project, uh, exciting stuff going on. Uh, storage, kind of the next big, big challenge, as Facebook yep. said, uh, to tackle, and uh, lots more to look forward to. So we'll be right back. Lots more coverage here from OCP 2016. This is theCUBE. Thanks. <laughs>